Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the last video, we considerably improved the look of our brand new content browser and also added some functionality to allow us to sort by column and navigate the folder hierarchy within the content folder. Today, I'm going to add a tile grid so that we can view our asset files using large icons as well. Before I get into implementing the tile view for the content browser, I'd like to quickly write a converter that would take the size of a file and convert it to a string that makes it easier to read. I'd like to express the file size in terms of bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, and so on. For now, this converter is only used in the content browser, so let's put it on top of this file. But of course, you could put it in a separate file if you so prefer. Here I add a class that implements iValueConverterInterface. First, we define an array of possible data size suffixes, from bytes all the way up to yottabytes. Actually, in this case, I felt like writing the code from scratch is too much of reinventing the wheel and decided to copy it from here and change it to my taste. The code is fairly straightforward. It basically calculates an index into the array of suffixes by taking the base 1024 logarithm of the data size. Now we can call this method in a converter, which is all there is to it. Of course, we need to use the converter in grid view columns cell template. So let's add it to content browser's resources and use it where it's needed. Running the editor, we can see the results. I'd like to get rid of that trailing zero at the end of each file size, so I set the decimal places to zero, which will run the numbers to the closest integer value. Ok, now let's look up how we can create a tiled view for our content browser that is similar to what we see here in Windows File Explorer. Fortunately, the documentation of list view has a how-to section, which contains the exact thing we are looking for. I guess we'll turn this into a copypasta video and get everything we need from here as well. So the first step is to have a class that inherits from ViewBase. Remember that list view has a view property that's currently set to our grid view, which we wrote in the last video. We can use this plain view class for displaying tiles, but let me first reformat the code a little bit. The next step is to put this chunk of XAML code that defines a style for the plain view class we just added. I'll put it in the content browser resources since we have the other styles here too. I make sure we use the right resource ID and again reformat the code.
For our use case, we don't need to bind the item width and height of the wrap panel, so I remove them. Similar to grid view, we need to add a plain view in our XAML file so that we can use it for the view property of the list view. Instead of defining grid columns, now we have to define what a tile will look like by adding a data template for our tiles. In our case, we want an icon stacked on top of the file name. Not really complicated. Finally, if you want the ability to change folders by double-clicking the mouse or pressing enter on the keyboard, we need to use the same events and event handlers. Luckily, the same code behind can be used for this. Now we are ready to use the tile view and we can do so by setting the view property of the list view. Starting the editor, we can see exactly nothing going on, which is less than ideal. For some reason that I don't understand, the plain view style that we defined earlier must be placed in a resource dictionary in a file that must be called generic.saml, which again must be placed in a folder called themes. I have no idea why this is, and if you happen to know that or care to research it, then I'd be really interested to hear it from you. But for now, I'll take this style and put it in the generic theme file. And there it is. Aside from a bit of misalignment, it looks like it's working fine. To make it align correctly, we need to set the vertical content alignment property in the plain view style to top. Now that we got it working, I'd like to add a toggle button, which we can use to toggle between grid view and tile view. So in the border on top, I'll add a toggle button and bind it to a data trigger in the list view style. This is what I like about WPF. You can define new UI functionality in a matter of seconds. 
By the way, the text box is just a placeholder for searching functionality that I'm probably going to implement sometime later. However, since we are doing a blue video, let's change how this toggle button looks using another style. Apart from setting the usual color brushes and margins, I have two images that are used depending on whether this toggle button is checked or not. Let me first add these icons to our resources folder. Again, don't forget to set their build action to resource in the properties panel. Now we can add a control template trigger that changes the image source depending on its checked property of the toggle button. I'm also going to add a new color and brush to Editor Colors Dictionary that we can use for borders which highlight when we move over them with the mouse. I think I messed up the tooltip, but I'm going to fix it sometime later. Of course, we must not forget to use this style for our toggle button, which I did, but that's easily fixed, even without restarting the editor, thanks to XAML Hot Reload.
And that's pretty much all I wanted to do for today. Now we've got ourselves a nice content browser that shows us the assets that we could use in the game. Next time, I'm going to improve the code architecture of the content browser view model and make it easier to work with. As always, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.